This video is going to have a bit of review and then also a bit of new stuff. October is not ready for it, but hopefully you are. Let's go. So we're going to start with some definitions that you should have probably been exposed to somewhere before. I'm not going to spend very much time talking about them, um, but just a quick review and I'll have it written down for you here so you can have them for reference. But if we have some kind of cost, the cost of producing some number of items, that's a combination of fixed costs that we always have to pay and variable costs, which depends on how much, how many items we're producing or something like that. We could find average cost by just dividing that total cost by how many things we're producing. Got some formulas here, got some explanations. We're not going to focus on that now because you've probably seen those before. But again, feel free to read and refresh if you'd like. Now, something new that we've maybe briefly talked about before, but is more of a focus for this chapter, is marginal cost. Okay, so marginal cost... At when we're producing Q items, it's just the cost of producing the next item. Okay, so if we're producing 50 items, the marginal cost will just be how much does that 51st item cost? How much more would we have to pay if we wanted to produce one more item? You could write it with this formula, right? What's the total cost of the net of 51 items, if you will? And how different is that from the total cost of 50 items? You can see then that the difference between those total costs would get you just the single cost of that one item. Now, usually this is really messy to deal with. And so a lot of times, and going forward in this class, pretty much all the time, we're going to approximate the marginal cost just with the derivative. And the book kind of goes in and why into talking about why this is an appropriate approximation. I'm not going to. Um, but we have, a, I think, one example that shows how similar they are on one situation. But yeah, we'll be approximating marginal cost with the derivative of our total cost function. All right? So you, I said that there are business applications of derivatives. Here's one of them, marginal cost, which is a very important um, quantity in general, marginal cost and marginal profit and stuff like that. Uh, we'll talk more about why in a future section. So let's do an example. So we see a table here and it's showing the total cost C of producing Q items. So if we produce no items, it's 20K of costs. 100 items is 35K, etc. So the first question asks, what is the fixed cost? Remember the fixed cost, total cost is a combination of fixed costs and variable costs. All right, so the fixed cost is just, well, how much, I like to joke and say it's how much do we have to pay for existing? Um, but that's kind of a sad way of phrasing it. Fixed cost is just, remember, um, you know, how much do we have to pay even if we don't produce any items? Okay, what are the costs that we have to pay all the time, regardless of production? And you can see right here that even if we don't produce anything, we have to pay 20K. All right. So here we go. Maybe that's, you know, a combination of rent or salaries or some other things. But here it's going to be $20,000. Part B. When 200 items are made, what is the total variable cost? So 200 items is right here. And remember that our total cost is just our fixed cost plus our total variable cost. So it's asking, right? It's asking for what total variable cost is. Well, we know at this point, I didn't give you anywhere to write this. At this point, we know the total cost is 45K. We just said the fixed cost was 20K. So that immediately tells us Pretend that says TVC. And immediately tells us, right, the total variable cost is 25K. All right, and that'll be our answer for this one right here. And then the other part of part two, what's the average variable cost? And again, that was one of those, um, one of those things we didn't talk too much about. But remember, the average cost is normally the total cost divided by Q. 
And you could find average fixed costs or average variable costs doing the same thing, just dividing how, by how many we're producing. So the average variable cost is just going to be the total variable costs divided by how many we're producing. We said that was 25K and we're producing 200 items. Divide that out and you'll get, uh, I think, 125. Let me, uh, let me double check that. 125 is what I think. 25,000 divided by 200 is indeed 125. And then what are our units? Well, we have total variable cost, which was in dollars. Q, which is the number of items. So the units are just dollars per item. If you have a fraction, the units also get divided in the same way that the numbers get divided. So this will be dollars per item, which again should make sense conceptually. If someone's asking what's the average cost, saying $125 per item makes sense. Okay, how much does each item cost on average? $125. What's the average cost? $125 duck, ducks, dollars, bucks per item. Finally, we're going to look at letter C. When 200 items are made, estimate the variable cost. Sorry, the marginal cost. Now, we can't find the marginal cost in either way yet. I said there's two ways that technically it's just find the cost of 301 items, subtract by the cost of 300 items right? Because it's the cost, oh, sorry, 201 and 200. It's just the cost of the next item. We don't have that information in this table, though. Furthermore, it's also the derivative. We don't, we can't find the derivative of this total cost function either. There's a few ways that we could do this, though. Remember that marginal cost at 200 items is basically the derivative here at 200 items. Now, we don't know the derivative, but we could approximate it, right? The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. We can approximate it with the slope of a secant line. Okay, so we can approximate it with the slope of the secant line between these two points. What's the slope between those two points? It's rise over run. Second cost minus first cost over second quantity minus first quantity. We're we want the cost of the next item. We don't know how much it costs to do 201, but we know what the cost of the next 100 items is. We could use that to approximate it. Okay. And we'll get 8,000 over 100 we'll get that the marginal cost is about $80 per item. And again, look, we have dollars on top, items on bottom, so our units will be dollars per item. The, the, the numbers get divided in the exact same way that the units get divided. That's the marginal cost here, approximately. All right. So notice there's a difference here at this point between average cost and marginal cost. When we're producing 200 items, the average cost is pretty high, $125 per item. But to make more items, it's only going to cost about another $80 per item. So you can see between these two quantities that our actual like cost efficiency of production that's not the technical term, but essentially the efficiency of production is going to be increased. We make more items at this point. That will not always be the case. It's not always more efficient to do more, but there's definitely a curve, right? Where if you're not producing very much, well, you're paying so much because you have fixed costs. And then usually if you start producing too much, right, you, you, you get bottleneck on some things and uh, you won't be able to produce as much. You're going to have to, you're going to have some waste or... You're going to be straining your capabilities and your equipment or your, um, or your labor, stuff like that. 
Okay, so usually there is a sweet spot, which again, we'll talk about later on in this uh, quarter. Okay, so that's an example of some business applications and marginal costs, total costs, fixed costs, etc. We got more business applications, more of you and more new things in the next video. So please let me know if you have questions. Again, uh, some of this stuff you might want additional review on, that's fine. Take a moment to do that review if you would like and ask me questions where you have them. Anyway, bye-bye.